Hey guys, it's Christian. Welcome to my newest video of the Eve and G and Juniper video series. A lot of you asked me stuff about the VQFX and the VMX and how to set it up and what interfaces to connect. So I thought it could be a good idea just to do a yeah, destructive lab session where I show you uh, yeah, how to do it the right way and where I also show you what could possibly go wrong and uh, yeah, if you misconfigure stuff, how this would behave on Eve and G. So the next time you see it, you know exactly what you have to do. Um, a lot of you asked me to do many more videos and I will try my best, but uh, because of all those uh, yeah, Corona thing, my workload has increased drastically. So uh, unfortunately, I'm not of one of those guys who has a little bit of spare time, but I will do my best to make more videos and uh, yeah, more frequent videos. Um, if you have any suggestions what you want to see, just leave it in the comments below or reach out to me via mail or Twitter. I am uh, yeah, very happy to address that and I will yeah, do everything I can to make it happen. Guys, uh, stay safe during those crazy times. I will also link some uh, blogs and the new Juniper forum, The Real Talk, in the video description. Um, there are a lot of great resources if you have spare time and you just want to yeah, polish your Juno skills a little bit. My fellow ambassadors have some great blogs that you definitely should check out. Uh, yeah, I will leave all the links in the video description and uh, without further ado, let's start labbing. In this video we're looking at this specific topology and we're going to break stuff because a lot of you ask me what happens if I delete certain interfaces from the config or what happens if I connect the wrong interfaces or some of you sent me screenshots with things that got wrong and today we're going to actively crash our VMX, our VQFX and our VSRX and we'll troubleshoot and yeah basically see what happens when you do things wrong so you know exactly what to do with your devices on even G. So down here I have a topology called everything fine, which is basically in every folder the images have the correct names and a correct version is assigned and they both have the same version and EM1 is still in the config and everything that needs to be set up suggested. So as you can see with the everything fine we connected the EM1 interfaces from our forwarding plane to our control plane. That's the channel where they will exchange their yeah, informations so that the VCP can talk to the VFP and vice versa. Same for the VQFX. For the VSRX we only have a single image so the yeah, forwarding plane and the control plane are basically in the same image so we don't have two devices that we need to add and usually things don't break on the VSRX because well you can't do anything wrong besides uh, giving it yeah way too less resources which we'll also do but with the everything fine everything is working we can go to the control planes of our VMX for example we use the login root there is no password on it. If there is a password, like for the VQFX when you boot it, it's Juniper. So go to the CLI. Let's have a look at the version 19.1 R1. Show chassis FPC. And as you can see, our FPC is online. Temperature is always testing because we're in a virtual environment. There is no real temperature, so this will always say testing. Don't get confused. And show interface terse. As you can see, there are our interfaces. And since no interface is connected, they will show us down. The VMX will reflect that. Let's have a look at the config. As you can see, this is a very minimalistic config. And yeah, you don't have an EM1 interface here in your config, but you still need to connect the EM1 interfaces because that's basically, yeah, where it connects to. And if you forget to do that, you will see that later, things will go horribly wrong. Let's have a look at the VQFX root and Juniper, also 19.4.1. 
show chassis FPC. As you can see, it's the same. It's online. Temperature will always say testing. And unlike the VMX, the VQFX interfaces, they will always show us up. And as you can see under interface tours, we have 11 of them. But if we go to the config, you will basically see in the default you have, because it's from the QFX 10K, you'll have all those QFX 10K interfaces. You have all the XE, the ET, some GE interfaces. And as you can see in the config, you have this EM1 interface. And that's exactly what needs to stay here. You can delete all the interfaces except the EM1. Don't delete it, don't change the IP, it will break your VQFX. That's the channel that the VQFX, PFE and DRE use to communicate to each other. For the VSRX uh, 3.0, for example, as you can see, I already logged in here. Also very minimalistic config, no EM interfaces, it's all handled internally and nothing can break at this point. So we're fine. That's the everything looks fine side of life. Now let's go ahead and say we delete EM1 from the config. Let's start with the VQFX. We start our images. Go to the consoles of our PFE and of our RE. As you can see, I'm loading the latest VQFX, so it's booting the Core Pure 64. It's the tiny core Linux 19.4 R1. And if your server has enough power, this should go very fast. With every new version, it improves a bit, at least here. And as you can see, the PFE is already up. Now we're just waiting for the RE to come up. Let's check the server load. As you can see, we have plenty of resources left. 12% CPU usage, 10% memory, everything's fine so far. So, and yeah, there's already a login prompt. Depending on the server and on the power of your server, this can take quite some time. And that's also a thing, don't wonder if it takes some time. And if your PFE needs a lot of time, these boxes are really resource intensive. So log in, root Juniper, go to the CLI, show chassis FPC. And as you can see, both devices are booted up, but our FPC zero, it shows that it's empty. So we have to give it a little bit of time. As you can see, we have some syslog messages. Let's do a refresh too. And let's just wait for our PFE to come online. And usually with a yeah decent server, this won't take very long, at least in the 19 version. And by the way, you can ignore those syslog messages. They will not harm your system or anything. I don't know exactly why they come up, but they are not harming anything. So you can just ignore them. So, and as you can see, it is online still needs a little bit of time because as you can see all the output is still zero so let's give it another 20 to 30 seconds now as you can see there it is cpu is still a little high but it'll cool down in just a moment so there we go show interface first 
and we have our interfaces and they are up. Let's go to the config. And there we have it. Okay, we have a lot of interfaces. And let's say you're doing a lab and you decide, well, I don't want all of that interfaces inside my lab. So I just say delete, delete interfaces and do a commit. And congratulations, we just broke the channel between the PFE and the RE. Show interface terse. They are still showing up, but in a moment they will disappear. Just the FPC still shows online. Let's give it a bit to realize, oh, it can't talk to the PFE anymore. And just to show you that we really did this, show display set, no interfaces configured anymore. So since we only have one VSRX image here, I'm not going to show that. And DM1 deleted from config, we can also boot the VMX. But as you know, inside the config, there is no EM config, so the VMX can't be broken like that, only if you yeah, connect it to the wrong interface or stuff like that. As you can see, the CPU is still the same and the, yeah, the utilization, the interrupts is still the same, so it's not getting any updates anymore. Let's have a look at the interfaces. They still show up. And again, also this can take quite some time. Let's have a look at the DM1. Still shows us up. Let's give it a little bit to realize that something failed. So as you can see here, it's rebooting again on the VMX side. So. Yeah, and sometimes your guacamole also does that. Don't get irritated. This is normal. So we'll go ahead and look at the if we still have it in here. Oh, we actually don't. So let's look at the everything is working side. One, as you can see, 169 run. Two is itself not working, obviously. And one, obviously not there. Still in online testing mode. It takes some time. And usually when you when you're rebooting the stuff because you think, well, something is wrong, I need to reboot, um, it will never come online. So the communication line is broken. That's it. Let's have a look at the interfaces again. They are still up. Yes, they are still up. Let's go ahead and uh, reboot the device. And as you can see, I'm just running four VMXs and four QFXs and one VSRX 3.0 and it still takes an amount of time, even though the server still has plenty of resources available. So don't worry, this is completely normal.
Oh yeah, we are. GM, and as you can see, there is no EM config. The VMX has a has an extreme small configuration when it's out of the box. So Charge has the FTC. You can uh, see that it's already present. Refresh two. Let's wait for it to come fully online. So it's already recognizing there is an FPC, but it still needs some time. In the meantime, our VQF excluded. So as you can see now, the time start to show. FPC, it's empty. The XE interfaces are not showing. Give it a refresh too, and it will never come online. But our FPC here is online, and there are our GE interfaces, all of them. So with the VMX again, you need to connect the EM1 to EM1, but you don't have the EM1 in the config, same with the VSRX. So that couldn't happen. The only thing where it could happen is at the VQFX side, because yeah, you have this dedicated EM1 IP inside of your configuration. And usually when people see those thousands of sub interfaces and uh, yeah, breakout interfaces, they go ahead and just say delete interfaces and wonder why the box is not working anymore. And that is exactly what happened there. So let's go ahead. As you can see, it, it will stay offline. So let's go ahead and go to our working box again. Right here. And let's configure the interface again. One, zero, family, IP address. Just the FTC, refresh two. Takes a bit now. So we're just waiting for it to come back. I will stop this VMX here just so we have more resources with the other devices we're using. I'm just letting the everything finds run because yeah, we can go back to that from time to time, check everything. As you can see, it's now starting with the messages again. You won't see them before. Now the RE and the PFE are already starting to communicate and soon you will see that FPC0 will change from empty to online and then after some time all the timers are back and everything is working fine again. So always remember the VQFX has EM1 in the configuration and you need EM1. Don't delete it. If you see a VQFX without an EM1 interface configured, you already know where the error is. And troubleshooting that uh, usually takes some time because you're really wondering if you're new to the VQFX, why is that not working? And the, in the how-tos they just say, okay, connect the EM1 interfaces, the internal interfaces, and uh, what now? I did that and it's still not working. Yeah, because you have deleted the interface. As you can see, it's back online and the timers are back. Terse. and as you can see our interfaces are back so that's the first thing that could go wrong I'm just forcing it to stop and you know you should never do that you should always shut it down through the CLI the PFE you can shut the PFE off but the RE please shut it down because virtually the stuff also can break 
so you can also crash your petitions even though it's a virtual device. So wrong hard disk naming. What do I mean with wrong hard disk naming? As you can see here, I have created some images with the name wrong in it. If we look at the VMX, for example, we see that for the VFP, the device has to be hda.qcow2. And what I did here is I assigned it a template where I'm using a vertio A configuration. Let's check the same for the VQFX. Let's take the RE194R1. It's an HDA. And the same with the wrong interface. It's a vertio A. With the VSRX, it's a little different because if we look at the VSRX, it is a vertio A. And if we look at the wrong VSRX, I made it an HDA. And now let's boot the devices and see what happens. Let's start with the VMX vertio A instead of HDA. And I'm booting the VCP here. It looks good so far. Let's do the same with the VFP. So the VCP or RE, it still looks fine. Let's look at the everything is fine PFE. It's in the Wind River Linux boot screen. So let's wait if the VFP will also go to that screen. Is the second reboot. Here it is, Wind Driven Linux. As you can see here for the VMX virtual chassis, some things have been said. Maybe I do that in another video. So many interesting things that we can do on the virtual devices. So the VFP looks good, right? Well, let's see. Let's see what our VCP does. Let's see. Okay, server has still plenty of power. So, as you can see, even if you have a very beefy server, it can take quite some time for the devices to boot up. So, we'll just give it a little bit of time.
Okay. Let's log in. Still storage looks good. See all the tests have passed. Mm -hmm. Joseph online. By the way, I love to go to the console and just check what it does here because it'll output everything to the console. And looks good. So we have uh, successfully wrongly named the images. And for the VMX, it does not seem to be a problem. So this is fine. Let's do the same for the VQFX. PFE looks good. And crash. So as you can see, the VQFXRE, it does not like that. It's trying to mount things, but it doesn't know where to get the root file system from. So for the VQFX, it is very important that you follow the interface naming standards. Let's have a look again. For the VQFX, for the RE, you have to use the HDA QCOW2. If you do it wrong and decide, well, I'm running all my Juniper images with the vert IOA driver, it won't work. The VQFX RE does not like that. So please, guys, follow the naming scheme hda.qcow2 for the vqfxre. You can also check out all the interface namings and all the file namings um, on the EFNG website. For every template that comes with EFNG, they will show you in the how-tos how that image naming has to be done. And please follow that. And if you get an image that says hda.qcow, rename it to qcow2. You need this file name else it won't boot as you can see this is the best case it will crash in most of the cases it won't just show anything all right let's have a look for the vsrx 3.0 will it still allow us to boot let's check So for the VSRX 3.0, the naming is vertioa, and if you use the wrong naming, I used HDA now. Basically, vertioa is yeah, a different driver than the HDA. That's for the QE mode to know how to talk to the drives. So let's see if we can boot from an HDA instead of a vertioa. So far so good, looks fine. So as you can see here, I'm using 21R1. So the newest VSRX 3.0 version at 
this day. And it introduced a lot of cool features like logical systems. You should definitely check that out. Well, I don't see anything wrong with it so far. trusty friend JWeb. And by the way, I used to be a JWeb hater, but with the VSRX 3.0 that changed. I love the new JWeb now for the VSRX. It's great. It almost feels like space and it's responsive. And if you have someone on site that is not that versed on the CLI, it's a great thing to do. And also if you have a lot of firewall rules, that thing is really usable. Don't blame me for liking it, but that is just, I just wanted to let you know, I like the JWeb on the VSRX 3.0. And there it is. That's good. Well, interfaces are still not up, but after some time, they will also come up. So don't get confused. Even though it says it's online, it would still take a little bit of time until all your devices are visible. So usually it takes about a minute or such. As you can see, our interfaces are here. And the status is also reflected. So if you connect them in EVE, they will also show us up. So for the VMX and for the VSRX, the interface, the not the interface naming, but the image naming is still important and you still should follow the requirements. But if you accidentally rename it, they will still boot. The VQFX, as shown, it will just refuse to do anything. It's just dead and it will be in a boot loop forever. So let's stop our second row here. So this one's my favorite. I don't need the resources, right? Let's unlock the lab first. I don't need that many resources. I'm very sure that I can do everything in just half. 
Well, let's see if we can do that. Let's just go ahead and change everything and say, screw you recommendations. I want to spin up a little bit more. And to be able to spin up more, I don't have that much RAM or CPU and I'm just I'm starting with the RAM. Because usually for a lot of people that seems to be an issue. But RAM isn't really your enemy, CPU is your enemy. If your CPU is not powerful enough, it doesn't matter what you do, you won't have fun. So, and, and this is my favorite and you will soon see why. Okay, let's try the VMX first. What happens if I say, screw the resources? I am doing my own stuff. That is something that I will tell you later about. Also, let, let's start the VSRX. So far, so good, right? Whoops, what do we have here? Oh, that won't work. So 3.0 protects you from what happened at my lab. At my lab, when I used the Firefly, I decided exactly to do that. I just use half of the resources. And with only half of the resources, my IPv6 stack broke. I was like, what the hell? Why is this not working anymore? And I troubleshooted and I troubleshooted and yeah, it, it just refuses to work. And this here, it already shows you, okay, there's nothing you can do, but if it's still booting and some features are starting to malfunction because you decided, well, I don't need the resources anymore, then things can get messy. Really, really messy. So as you can see, never do that. There is a minimum requirement and that's what the Eve template gives you and don't go below it. If you're a developer and you know exactly what you do and you have a custom image and you know exactly what you do and you're trying to test something and you know exactly what to do, you can do it. But besides that, never ever do that. So let's see if our VMX comes up. WinDribble Linux, so the VFP from 4 gig to 2 gig, it still seems to boot. Let's see what our VCP does from 2 gig to 1 gig. So I think with the VFP we're done. And let's start our VQFX. Let's see if it boots. Or if it catches fire. Let's 
this way we can see everything. And again, PFE looks normal. So let's see what our REs are doing. And by the way, there's another thing that I'm asked a lot of times, there is no VEX. There's only the VQFX and it's only for yeah, virtual testing purposes. And the thing is, a lot of you also ask me if virtual chassis or virtual chassis fabric is possible with the VQFX. It's not, because this is a QFX 10K, the VQFX, and the QFX 10K supports neither VC nor VCF. But you can do cool EVPN stuff with it. Really cool EVPN stuff. So let's log in. Bookshelf's empty. Wait a bit, same here. It's already saying present. There seems to be some communication already. And oh, it's empty. Let's wait a bit. It was on absent, right? And now it's empty. I wonder if that has something to do with me cheaping the resources. And yes, indeed, it does. It won't come back. So for the VMX, if you do that, you break your neck. Just going to half the resources, VMX is out, VSRX is out. Let's see what the VQFX does. I can power that down because I've tested that many times. Trust me, you don't want to do this. And I can power that one down as well. And there we are. Well, everything seems to be normal. So I can do it, right? Wrong. Don't do it. Stuff will break. I haven't tested that very deep on the VQFX, but I can assure you, if you have the resources, things will burn. So don't do it. Even if it looks like it's normal, it's not. Trust me, it's not. So. That's, uh, in my opinion, a really bad thing that it still boots and it still shows you, well, everything is working fine. You did a great job. All the other people, they just waste the resources and uh, you're the one who is doing the perfect resource balance. No, you're not. Please don't ever do that. You can always give it more resources though, but never go below the recommendations. If you edit the template, you will see the minimum recommendations and and trust me the eve guys are testing this extensively and the community is testing this extensively and usually they know where you can go and where you shouldn't go so let's do the next one wrong interface connected in this case i haven't connected the em1 but i've connected the fxp instead so what should happen Exactly, we should never see the FPC online. And let's see if that really happens. For the VMX and for the QFX. We don't have that test for the VSRX because it's just a single image and there is nothing that you can connect the wrong way. 
you can still connect things the wrong way. <laughs> you still have an FXP interface, uh, like this here. You still have an FXP interface. And if you think, okay, the first interface is my GE0, I mean, that's why it says FXP. Um, the same thing is when you build clusters. You build clusters on EVE with the BSRX, there will be an interface renaming. You can see that on my blog. I've blocked about that. And uh, yeah, you need to know the mapping because the EVE UI, it can't reflect that, oh, this is a single SRX and this is a cluster. So you need to know what image you select. And else you might see fun, fun side effects. Whenever I say fun, this was pain. But, but fun pain, don't get me wrong. I love troubleshooting stuff. And I love it when people break things in a very creative way because that way you will learn so many things. Most of the things I know today are because something went wrong because some people yeah, tried a specific config or rebooted a device suddenly while doing other stuff and those funny side effects because usually that side effects really hurt but this will also burn into your memory you will never forget about that and if there's anything similar you will immediately remember okay i struggled there last time and i know exactly what we need to do so it's not a bad thing breaking stuff is not a bad thing in production it can be really bad don't get me wrong don't start to break your production but uh, yeah if you break stuff in your lab to see how a protocol behaves or yeah, how the device itself behaves that can be a really good resource and it will also help you for your lab for the jncie for example because if you know how the device behaves if certain stuff breaks and you see, oh, this device is showing exactly this behavior, you will save a significant amount of time in the troubleshooting section. And that is, if you look at the new JNCIE exams that only have six hours, that's a really good thing if you're a little faster. So break stuff before. I would strongly encourage you to do that in your test environment. And define a standard where you know, okay, I know exactly how everything works here and then randomly start to break stuff. Or if you're learning with a colleague, ask him to break stuff and you need to find out what he did. Because this way you will learn a lot about your Junos and uh, yeah, in case you don't find it, you have someone who can tell you, okay, I did this and that. And learning with a group of people is always more fun compared to learning alone and you can help each other. That's a good thing, especially in those times now. It seems like our VFP is already waiting for the VCP to come online. So let's wait for it. While we do that, we can already start our VQFX. Let's do it here. VFX, VFX. And it's up. Creating that initial config also takes some time, so. And there is our VMX. So 
in here and the new VQ of X is really faster compared to the others, at least on my boxes. So I would say let's give it two minutes and after those two minutes we will see that the communication is still not working because we connected the wrong interface. So. And uh, I would strongly suggest to make that a direct connection. I've seen people like, okay, I'm using a switch between the VFP and the VCP just for fun and doing separate VLANs for each device. And uh, it works technically, but you will introduce some unnecessary latency and usually stuff breaks sooner or later. So please use a direct link between the VCP and the VFP. I mean, you wouldn't open your QFX hardware switch, desolder the internal interfaces and route them over another switch just because you thought, well, I like that, this is a good idea, because it is not. Because think, think, think of those two images as one device, and that's your that's your internal link. That's why it's called int for internal. You don't want to put your int link on some layer two network. That just feels wrong. So as you can see, a few minutes have passed. Nothing happens. We don't have any connection at all. Why? Because this is the wrong interface. You need to connect int to int. And I mean it's very easy because if, if, if you connect those interfaces, let's go ahead and connect them. You have this interface naming. You have the FXP, you have the int, and you have your even your EM to GE mapping. So all of that has been done by the Eve Dev team and that is really cool that you know okay the EM interfaces you've seen them before in the config they map to the respective GE interface. All right so that was the wrong interface and uh, yeah we're done. We have basically broken our devices in every way I can think of. No I, I wouldn't say that because usually there are very creative ways to break stuff. Let me know in the comments if there is another way to break the devices and we can lab that as well. I hope you like this video and uh, yeah, be sure to hit that subscribe button. There will be many more videos now. Thank you very much. Have a great day.